What father will give his son over to sinners? And it says that throughout the Bible, it's not for us to understand, it's us to accept. We don't just say when we're in where we're singing together, for where two or three are gathered in his main name, he is there in the midst. We don't say, How can I sing this great hymn to Jesus Christ who sucked the breast of Mary? We don't say that. But we we get our attention off of that. And off of me and say, I don't understand this great love that he would go through all the humiliations of a regular human being and yet stay sinless through 33 and a half years. I don't understand it, but I am going to accept it and rejoice in it. Now, let me just read again for uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 because... We, we read there that Jesus was rich. And not, not like we, you know, count riches, though. Not like that, you know. But he had all things in, in ways that we can only imagine, though. He had all things. So let me go to 2 Corinthians, okay? And I'm just going to read briefly a, a few verses from, um, you know... Uh, Isaiah 53, and, and, and that's it for me. I mean, if you want to say something else, I'm not going to respond to whatever you're going to say to, uh, you know, whatever you're going to, you know, say after I give you Isaiah. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9, okay, I'm going to go there now, and, uh, it says this. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that um, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. Plusias. Plusias. It means all riches, an abundance of riches, it says. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that uh, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might become rich. Why did he go through all of those things that our friend said that he has to go if he was born? And I'm going to Isaiah right now, and I'm going to finish. Well, because he did it for us. That's why, now, not only for us, because he loved the Father, it says in John's Gospel. Also, though, can't forget that. Now, let me just go to Isaiah, and I promise that's it for me. You can say something else, or, you know, you can give impossibilities all you want. I'm just going to finish, you know. So, I'm going to go to Isaiah 53, where it speaks about the, the, the great activity of the Messiah. Okay, and uh, it's a very short chapter, so I'm just going to read all of it, really. It's very short. It says, who have believed our report? Look at that. Who have believed our report, though? Who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And it says, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. Just like our friend said. As a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, I don't know if you're still there, Tony, and we shall see, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised. Isn't that the truth nowadays? He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. It says, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him not. Okay, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. 
but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. That's why he did it all. Verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. In other words, he suffered all of this for us. All, even more than our friend talked about. Who cares about a baby Craig and Pampers, okay? He suffered more than that. More. Again, he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before um, her shearers is dumb, so he opened on his mouth. Verse 8. He was taken from prison. Look at that. Prison. Okay? He was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall okay who shall declare his generation for he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgressions of my people was he stricken and he made his grave with the wicked okay and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, okay? He had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul... An offering for sin, he shall see his seed. That's why he did it, though. In other words, he 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 went through all of that to see his seed, those who were going to be born again. That's why he endured all of that. He shall see his seed. He shall he shall prolong his days. And it says over here. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul. The travail of his soul. And shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with, <laughs> with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many. And made intercession for the transgressors. That's why he did it all. For us and for the love of the Father. And if you don't understand it, I am sorry. Because you are to be counted the most miserable. Very good. Uh... I have to say that I do agree that Jesus Christ, the anointed Son of God, did all of those things for us. I agree. Jesus wasn't anointed until 33 when he was a, a grown man. Before that, he was just a man, the Son of God, but uh, just a man. Second of all, the Asian Asian Creed, part of it says the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God, and yet there are not three gods but one God. Now, that was very simple, very clear. But what you do not find from Matthew all the way to Revelation is that clear, concise, and there's more to the Asian Asian Creed, I encourage anybody to read it. 
But it took men who are not inspired, who had nothing to do with writing God's Word, to write something so clear. They did it. But the Apostle Paul, Peter, Jesus, John, Mark, Luke, Matthew, none of those men said anything so clear and so straightforward. But it took men that were uninspired to say it. That's very interesting. I find that very, very interesting. It would have been so easy and so clear for the Apostle Paul in all of his writings to all the congregations that he wrote to, to the Galatians, to the Ephesian congregation, to the Philippian congregation. What about the seven congregations that John wrote to? But you never find anything so clear and concise anywhere in the Bible. Well, there's a lot of stuff that's clear and concise. A lot of stuff. Very point blank and straightforward. But you don't ever find anything like this about the Trinity. It's interesting that people want us to believe something uninspired men wrote. But yet, God's inspired writers didn't write it. I find that interesting. Yes, I do believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was transferred. His life was transferred from heaven to the womb of Mary, where he grew, became a boy, an infant, a boy, and then a man. And at manhood, he came to John the Baptist and was baptized. Holy Spirit came upon him. Bam! He is the anointed Messiah at that point. What does he do? He's led into the wilderness by God's Spirit for 40 days and 40 nights by himself. I guess he had a lot of catching up to do. I guess all of his pre-human existence, the glory that he had with the Father, John 17, 5, was revealed to him at that point. And from that point on, that's when Jesus' ministry started. He was such a different man. Nobody recognized him from that point on. His own family was saying, this guy's mad. Who is this guy? People were saying, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph? They knew who he was. But they didn't know who he was after he became the Messiah because he was a different person. He was born again. He was regenerated. That's why God said, today, you are my son. Because before that, he was just a person. After his anointing, he became the son of the Almighty God, anointed Messiah, the Christ, in a special way. And after that, he was raised from the dead. He was exalted to a superior position. To whose glory? Paul said, to the glory of the Father. The glory of the Father. And who do we worship? As Christians, what well, Jesus told the Samaritan woman, the Father is looking for people to worship him in spirit and in truth. The Father. He didn't say the Son. He didn't say the Holy Spirit. He said the Father. Jesus, the Son of God, is not the Father. That's the Trinitarian doctrine. The Father is never the Son. The Son is never the Father. The Holy Spirit is never the Father. The Father is the Father, the Son is the Son, and the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. Three separate, distinct persons and Almighty God, according to the Trinity. But Jesus told the Samaritan woman to worship the Father. That he wouldn't contradict himself later on and say, no, worship me. He wouldn't contradict himself and let other people worship him. Although that's what the Trinitarian doctor is, that there are scriptures that show that Jesus is receiving direct worship just like the Father deserves. Not just a basis, not just following me like you would do a powerful king and do honor, but direct worship. A person that you pray to, yet Jesus directed us in Matthew chapter 6 to pray to the Father. Jesus prayed to the Father, who are in the heavens. Now I submit to you that Jesus taught us to worship God the Father, not God the Son, because the Bible doesn't say God the Son. Or God the Holy Spirit. But it does say directly, in crystal clear language, Greek, Hebrew, if it's translated, African, whatever language it is, it says God the Father. Never God the Son. Have a good night. And let all the angels of God worship Him, the Son. Hebrews 1 4. Thank you very much for me.